game is victorious. Hello everybody, and thanks so much for tuning into my very first How to Play Revenant video. Uh, today we're going to be starting with Harold, my favorite flavor of Revenant. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that cinematic at the very start. Uh, I had a lot of fun putting that together, and hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I do. Um, now for today's video we're going to be talking about some fundamentals of Harold. Then we're going to be talking about how to survive, how to do damage, and then we're going to go into a little bit of a gameplay analysis and review and that sort of thing. Uh, this is a big video. Uh, so sit yourself down for a good long watch. Uh, I hope you guys find this helpful and uh, enough of me yapping. Let's get right into it. So to start off I'm going to talk about why uh, firstly I might be an okay person to listen to about Harold and then secondly we're going to uh, start going through some fundamentals of Harold and Revenant in general. So a little bit about me. Uh, I have played, uh, I just hit 5,000 games of PvP uh, this season. Uh, that's total cumulative. Uh, 2,000 of those have been on Revenant. I'm currently rated 1562 after 92 games, and very few of those games have been duo queued. Most of that has been solo queued. Um, I'm not the best Revenant. I could name 20 better Revenants off the top of my head, uh, but very few of them are actually making videos and tutorials. And I learned Revenant the hard way many years ago, and always wished that somebody had put out some comprehensive information. So that's what I'm aiming, aiming to do with this series. Uh, so. Some fundamentals of Herald and Revenant in general. Firstly, um, as you know, you've got an energy bar here. And you need to spend energy in order to cast skills other than your auto attack. Now, one of the first things that you will learn is that while you are in combat, what you can do is run away and bank energy so that you can use a large flurry of skills all in one go. So for instance here I can go like port in and then completely dump my bar and then there you go. So that's called banking energy and it's 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 integral to doing damage and staying alive on rev. Uh, this sort of flow, the in and out, you know, going in and, and getting out of fights like that. Now uh, tied to the energy system is the fact that uh, sometimes you're not going to have enough energy to use your stun break, okay? So let's just burn enough energy. See, I can't actually cast my stun break right now. I don't have enough energy to do so. So the way I would do this is I would swap and then use my stun break if I were to get CC'd. So having your, your legend swap ready to go essentially gives you access to another stun break. Uh, and so because of this, you never want to be too terribly aggressive on your enemy unless you've got your legend swap available because that gives you access to another stun break and that combo of legend swap and then stun break is something that's going to save your bacon uh, quite regularly so uh, get familiar with the idea get comfortable with it because you're going to be using it a lot um, okay so next uh, this one is more uh, herald specific here um, the facet skills can be a little bit tricky to learn because they've got two things that they do now, when you're just running around, you're going to want to put this one on, Elemental Facet or Blast, whatever it's called, Facet of Elements, I think, Facet of Darkness, and Facet of Light. Now, the reason for that is this one will give you swiftness so that you can move around the map more quickly. This one will have your stun break ready to use. And finally, uh, your heal is how you're going to mitigate a lot of the damage that's coming into you. So having that one ready to use is important. So when you're just roaming around the map, you generally want to try and have these three on. Don't worry too, too much about, you know, what each individual boon gives you uh, to start out because the facets are uh, maybe complex skills. I'm not going to explain them all. Uh, I'm going to trust everybody who's watching this video to go and read all their own skills. Uh, but that is the three that I recommend running around on because this will give you the best chance of surviving. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is how to survive on this build. Um, it can be a little bit tricky to conceptualize how exactly you're supposed to keep yourself alive on this build because of the fact that you've not got a uh, traditional heal. Uh, most classes can, can take a step away from the fight, um, cast their heal skill, cast for instance mending or, or something like that and then they can come back with a, a full health bar. Um, but for Herald, and uh, well, yeah, mostly for Herald, 
That's not the case. You don't have a, a skill you can just cast to heal yourself. So you've got to be a little bit more creative um, than that. Now, Battle Scars will heal you. They will keep you topped up. I'm going to take a little bit of damage here. And you can see just from auto attacking, I'm getting a little bit of health back. Okay. Um, so Battle Scars helps. Uh, the other thing too is you need to use your movement skills to, uh, to survive. You see I can turn impossible odds on and then this guy can no longer chase me. He, he's just simply not fast enough. Oh, he's fast enough there. Um, on the flip side, on this legend on Glint, the more facets you have active, the faster you move. This buff here, Rising Momentum, allows you to move very, very quickly. So if you need to, to, to um, escape, this is the way to do so, uh, is to activate as many of those. And then same thing over here when we're back on Assassin, Impossible Odyssey, where it's very slow. And then our swiftness runs out and we're glacially slow. We can pop impossible odds and zoom. There we go, just like that. Now, uh, one more thing, one uh, additional tip. This is more advanced for surviving. Um, now, mind you, we're not talking about weapon skills. We're just talking about Herald and what comes in your kit here. Um, while running away, okay, you can cast the Fast of Chaos, your Glint Wings. And now it's got a very long cast time. So what you're going to do, okay, is we're going to cast it while running away. And then last second, turn around and hit him with that. And now that actually gives us super speed. A nice long one as well. So we've not only knocked them back, but they've, we've given ourselves additional movement speed to successfully get away, to successfully get out of that fight. So there's three uh, quick little things on, on how to keep yourself alive. As an addendum to keeping yourself alive, um, I also wanted to talk about how um, you don't always want to be using your skills entirely for damage. Like for instance, when you are um, going into um, Assassin here, uh, we don't just want to go straight into impossible odds to maximize our damage all the time. We want to actually wait until we've got an opportunity to deal that damage before we're going to be blowing our energy. So it makes more sense to keep yourself alive than to maximize damage because of the fact that uh, dead people do no damage at all. So I get my glint heal off here and I'm going to take as much damage as I can from these guys. Obviously I'm eventually going to die. This is a little much for a, uh, a herald to survive. You don't have a ton of sustain on this build. Um, another way you can get additional healing is by stealing health with uh, the true nature facet um, activated on assassin. But uh, there's another t um, just kind of general thing when you are playing Herald. You don't want to be just using your um, skills solely for damage and nothing else. You want to actually be using them to keep yourself alive primarily and damage second. And as a matter of fact, I think I might even win this, uh, this fight against the guards here. So um, there's a little addendum to keeping yourself alive. Uh, next we're going to be talking about uh, dealing damage. Okay, so lastly, before we get into, the last thing we're going to talk about before we get into some gameplay is how to actually deal damage on uh, Rev. Now, it's not as simple as it may seem uh, because of the fact that you're a bit of a squishy guy uh, and if you spend too much of your energy doing damage, uh, you leave yourself open for a counterattack. So you need to do your damage uh, in a smart way and that, the, the, the main way that you uh, accomplish that is by having a, uh, a strong opener that doesn't leave you too too vulnerable. So there's two main openers that you're going to want to memorize. One where you're opening up from Assassin Stance and one when you're opening up from Glint Stance. Um, now you don't typically want to aggress on an enemy unless you've got your Legend Swap available. So I'm going to demonstrate the opener on Assassin Stance. It's, it's very simple and this one is very easy to learn. Um, simply all you want to do is you want to start by phase traversaling whenever you see an opportunity to do so. Uh, and then that will allow you to have quickness, have unblockable, and the phase traversal itself will do damage as well. You can also precast your chain of daggers for an additional damage. So simply, when you are on Assassin, you start with Assassin, and then you can port in and do the big damage that way. Now, for uh, opening on Glint, 
uh, I recommend opening by using your facet of chaos, your big dragon wings. Um, now, the idea there is you can CC them and hit them with some skills and then swap immediately into Shiro. The swap will give you quickness, which will allow you to do the big damage and finish the kill. So here's a little demonstration here. We're gonna do the, the glint wings and then we swap. And that gives us the quickness. And I got CC'd by the warrior bot, everybody laugh, ha ha ha. Um, and so that's gonna be your opener for um, glint. So those are the two sort of standard openers that you're gonna be wanting to use uh, to play power rep. Finish off the stomp here. Okay, so let's finally get into some gameplay. This is what everybody's waiting for. Okay, so we've got a dual sword gameplay here. Uh, now, I, I am taking inventory of the map. I see that my teammate is fighting this guy, so I'm going to pour it in and finish the fight. Uh, you are not a fight starter. You're a fight finisher, okay? You don't want to be taking duels. You don't want to be charging in. You want to be the guy that cleans up that fight. So we just won that fight for our guy. We come in. Oh, look. DH kill him because he's fighting our teammate. So we end two fights in quick succession there. So that's really, really good. So that went very well for us. And we're, we're roaming around now. We see, okay, that guy there is going to be coming into uh, our friend who's on far. So I'm getting my assassin ready, ready to port in on him. I use my opener, open up on him, do as much damage as I can. And he jumps out of my, my range. So I use my facet of elements there, the dragon AoE, to get him while he's out of my reach. So that's a, a good way to use that skill on guys who uh, are not able to be meleeed. Uh, now I can see there's two guys up on mid, one guy going to Arno to home. Uh, now I'm not a fight starter, right? I'm a fight finisher. So I'm not gonna rush into those two guys uh, solo. I'm gonna see, okay, what's my teammate doing over there? I'm waiting, I wanna play around him. Okay, so I think he's gonna follow me in here. So I'm just gonna go have a little poke at the NG and see what's going on. Okay, the NG stealth, and here we go. I poured it on DH because he's squishier. I did with the sword four to immobe him and the, then the sword 5 immediately to finish him off. That's a really strong combo. You want to use that whenever you're doing dual swords. Sword 4 to immob, then sword 5 to finish him off. Now, my friend, I could see, is, is going to die, so I, I, I had to leave him to die. We, we don't want to turn one death into two. Uh, I kind of uh, bat the enemy revenant off of myself. I'm not really looking to duel him here. Um, I'm looking to make space and finish fights for my team. So I back off. I'm looking back to our node and seeing, okay, there's this, the enemy spellbreaker going into our node, but I think that our guy can finish that, so I go back into mid to pick up this kill, which is successful. And down here, my teammate really needs a bailout, so I'm a little bit late to, to, to the site, but now, okay, I need to duel this revenant, and I need to get this kill. So you're going to see the big combo here again. He does a successful jade on me, very nicely played by him. I get my stun break finally. He uses his staff 5. I know that I can line up damage, so I use my big combo 4 into 5 there. As soon as he gets out of his staff 5, because I know that he's going to be vulnerable at that frame, and I get the kill because of it. So we end up winning this node because of a couple key picks there. And I think that's where I'm going to end off this gameplay. Let's move on to the next one. So here, this is going to be an example of, of survival. So I'm being ganked right now by a, a Mesmer and a Deadeye. Um, pretty much a nightmare scenario for just about anybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the boxes to uh, kite now. So the Deadeye follows me up here. Um, I try and put a little bit of damage on him. I've got my uh, F2 on Assassin to steal life currently as well. And right now I'm just using the terrain to the very best of my ability while trying to stay alive. I just don't want him to hit me. So I'm gonna jump back up onto the box. I juked out his steel. Okay, the Mesmer's here as well. Oh geez, I'm in big trouble. So I'm just continuing to kite as, as very best as I can. Getting up and down off the boxes, chaining my, my blocks and my dodges together. And also hitting him back a little bit too, right? Uh, countering the damage is, is key to surviving. And you see, okay, I caught him out here with my hammer and I was able to actually get the kill there. Um, so there's a very good example of how you can turn uh, being attacked by two or three guys into possibly a kill even. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this clip starts out, as you can see, we're losing really, really badly. I'm 2v1 with a, uh, a, a teammate against a Spellbreaker. Um, he's very, very tanky though, so we're having a lot of trouble getting the kill. Um, I land a key CC while he's uh, trying to cast his heal, which makes him need to leave the node. 
Uh, so he starts running towards uh, my home node, and I get a Mesmer that comes to uh, cap the node. So I'm going to let him cap. I'm going to try and chase this guy and secure the kill. Now I can see he's moving towards our spawn, towards our home node. We've got a Mesmer there on that node. So I'm going to direct my attention instead to mid, which is currently being fought on. So I'm going to try and win two fights at once here and without getting a kill. So I do a big burst on the Spellbreaker at mid and then leave my teammate with him uh, and trust that he can get the kill. And then come back to this duel that I knew was happening to come and secure this as well. Mesmer lands a huge uh, key MOA on uh, the enemy Spellbreaker, and then as he's uh, got all kinds of damage mitigation, I wait and finally secure the kill. So with a little bit of key positioning, we were able to win two fights at once. We were able to win at home, and we were able to win at mid at the same time uh, without me actually getting a kill. I just set them up for my teammates, and my teammates were able to, to finish them. Um, sadly, my Spellbreaker, who uh, some people will probably know. He's a pretty famous guy in the uh, Guild Wars community. Um, sadly passed away of natural causes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but my Mesmer dies as well. I come back to try and support him and help him. Um, now this is a, a catalyst, a very, very tanky duelist. Not something I'm really going to be able to kill solo. So I'm just kind of staying back and, and getting some damage in with my hammer here. I don't really have a lot of skills. I don't have my, my Legend Swap. I don't have my Phase Traversal. Uh, but that comes up now. And so I'm going to try and put some damage in on him here. My initial burst doesn't really land. I get a nice Sword 3. I look at this. Big heal into the Dragon's Tooth. And then CC combo into the hammer. And I secure the kill. Next clip here, I'm rolling up on a team fight that our team has won. So I'm hoping to help with the cleanup essentially. Um, now this is actually going to be a misplay here. As you can see I'm chasing down the enemy Spellbreaker but right behind me on my coattails is my warrior. You see him right there um, and now he says okay I don't want to sit here and fight 2v1 so he runs away. It would have been better to allow my warrior to take this fight instead of me because I'm not a duelist and the Spellbreaker should win this. So right now uh, I know that and so I'm kind of playing on the back foot. I've got my Glint heal up, so I'm going to try and maximize it. I get CC'd, so that's when I pop my Glint heal, because I know that the warrior is going to follow up his CC with some damage. And at this point, I'm just trying to land as much safe damage as I can. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of damage, you'll see, and then running away. He's crippled me, so I'm not very fast. Oh, that's a Rampage. So now I'm completely on the back foot. Luckily, he drops his Rampage early. I think maybe because he thought he landed enough CC on me. But right now, it is my duel to win, but he gets a nice damage combo on me, so I need to play on the back foot. I try to go for the CC, but I don't get much on him. Pop onto my safer weapon set, the hammer, trying to get some safe damage. Nothing's really landing, but look, my beautiful Mesmer's come in and give me the plus that we need to uh, finish off that duel. So big misplay by me by taking that duel when I could have let the warrior do it. Um, but there's a little e example of how you can hang with people and uh, win duels if you play correctly and you play smart. So quick kill on the Herald here. This isn't very challenging because of the fact that we're 2v1 and he's uh, out of position. So get that quick kill. Moving into mid, thinking, okay, who am I going to damage next? But they stack up together, makes my decision easy. I just damage them both. Druid's looking uh, like a good target right now. Our team's all hitting him, so I just contribute to the damage, and there we go. The, the enemy warrior gets a successful banner on the druid, so that rises him. Uh, I didn't have anything to, to interrupt that at the time. Uh, but looking up at the scoreboard, we can see that we are now ahead by a good margin, which is great news. We were behind, very behind at the start of the game. So now we just need to play defensive and ride these nodes to the win. So I'm looking here, we've got my spellbreaker dueling the enemy spellbreaker, but my spellbreaker is at 100 health, and he's at very low, so I'm going to leave that duel to play out. I'm looking around, okay, there's a duel that we need to help. Uh, my Mesmer's in trouble, so I'm going to jump on to the Ellie and secure the kill, and that will win us the game. Wow, so that brings us to the end of the video. I truly cannot thank you enough for uh, watching to this point. This has been a huge undertaking for me as somebody who uh, is not good at speaking, <laughs> is not good at editing. This is the first time I've ever really edited a video. Uh, so 
this has been a huge undertaking for me. This took me more than a week. Uh, I work a full-time job, so this is a uh, obviously a side hustle for me. Not even a hustle, just a side project for fun. I don't make a, a single penny off any of this. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for watching. I truly cannot thank you enough for uh, watching to the point that you have. Uh, if this has helped you or this has been something that you've enjoyed to watch or something that I should keep doing, uh, I'd really appreciate knowing that. Uh, this is the first time I've ever asked for any sort of likes or anything like that, but it, it would mean a lot to me if, uh, if this was helpful to you. If you could leave a, a comment or a like or subscribe, uh, that will let me know that, hey, maybe I should get better at this thing and uh, do some more videos like this. So anyways, um, thank you very much for watching to the point that you have. And uh, yeah, we'll see if for probably next will be just another gameplay video and maybe I'll work on another guide. Let me know if you'd, you'd like another guide, maybe one for Vindicator, which is Harold's stronger brother, or maybe even Renegade. Uh, let me know what you guys would like to see. Okay, thanks very much and we'll see you next week.